everybody, hope you're having an awesome day so far. Welcome to my channel if you are new and to everybody else, what's up? So today's video is going to be a makeup tutorial on this makeup look. It is girly, it is pink, it has a wing, it has sparkles, it is everything you need in your life right now. Um, it's the look that I wore to my benefit meetup in Auckland and a lot of you asked if I could do a tutorial on the look so here it is. It's perfect for prom or for a special event or just for daily wear if that's what you want to do. So if you want to learn how to do this look, please keep on watching. Whenever I go to an event, I always do my eyes first and I do that for one of two reasons. One, because if I do a smoky eye or if I have fallout or any dark colors drop below, then I can just easily clean it up and not have to worry about doing my base over again. Second reason being, most foundations only look good for like five to eight hours. You kind of want your foundation to look its absolute prime while you're out at your event or out doing what you want to do. So the best thing to do is do it very last so that it doesn't kind of just sit on your skin and just waste its staying power. You know what I mean? So I am starting off with my eyes. I'm using Painterly Paint Pot as my base. I'm just picking up a synthetic brush and I'll be applying that all over my eyelid. I know I've used this palette a few times in my past few tutorials, but I've just been in love with it. I've been traveling with it, and this is what I did use on my event. It is the Morphe palette, and you guys asked me which one it is, and the only thing I know about it is it's a 35N on the back. I'm not actually sure what the actual palette name is, so I'm sorry about that. All right, so I'm going into the palette, and I'm just going to pick up this neutral tone color right here, press that all over my lid space, up to my crease, and into my inner corner. Taking a fluffy blending brush, I'm grabbing this color right here. It's just slightly darker than what we used, still kind of a skin tone beigey color. Picking that up onto the tip of the brush and just placing that into my crease. And I'm not gonna be too precise with the color placement, it's more of just a transition color, but I am going to focus it more on the outer side of my eye than the inner side. Place the color down and then maybe venture over into the inner portion of your crease, but again, concentrate it on the outside. Next up, I'm taking a smaller, slightly denser pencil brush and picking up this peachy pink right here. You can use any peachy pink tone that you have. I'm just focusing the color on the outer corner. I'm not going to drag it past the middle of my lid. And again, with a slightly deeper tone on a smaller blending brush still, I'm picking up a little bit of that color and placing that again even more directly into the crease. Kind of like narrow your area down of where the placement is as you go. After that's in there on the same brush, I'm just gonna pick up some of this brown color and I am going to take it directly in the outer V kind of portion of my eye just to deepen up the crease a little tiny bit more. So for now, that is the situation with the shadow. I'm gonna move on to doing a liner and I'm gonna do a cat eye and I'm using the Benefit Their Real Push Up Liner. I really like this stuff. Like I've said previously in videos, you do need to work with this product a little bit quicker than a typical like gel liner or something like that. Um, it is a beautiful product if you kind of understand how to use it. And the first tip that I definitely have with using this is make sure that you wipe off the nib. Make sure there's no remaining product that could have dried up even further in the little thing. I even sometimes will click it so that product comes out and then I further wipe it again just to make sure that everything's clear and it's ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to take it from the very, very corner of... What is that? So once you've made a line, usually I screw up on the upper bit because that's just very common of me. What I do to fix that is I take the liner the other way, flip it over, and drag it back. And I can just connect the two spots, just like that. So I have the line like that. I then will take the liner and pull it onto my lid. If you need to fix up the tail at all, do it right now because this product will set, like I said, it does dry quickly. And just continue making your line by dragging it in. Okay, moving on to the lower lash line, I'm going to take this warm brown color right here um, and I'm going to pick it up onto a small little angle, not angle, a small little short shader brush. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to pick it up onto the edge of that, make sure there's no fallout. and place it just underneath my eye. I'm not gonna drag it all the way, I just kind of want it in that very outer corner bit. 
And as you notice, I did take the liner and I dragged it a tiny bit underneath my eye. I forgot to film that part. So that is it for shadows. Now comes the fun part, the glitter. Um, this is a makeup store glitter. They are by far, as far as I've tried, the best glitter on the market. Every single one of their glitter products is just like, what? Um, I use their loose glitter in my Katy Perry tutorial. All of you were like, oh my god, what'd you use? It's always the makeup store. Um, I don't think you can order online as of yet, but you can phone into their store and then order via the phone. Um, this particular product is called Queen. It looks like this. It has kind of an iridescent, bluey, pinky, purpley look, um, and just a little tiny brush to apply. And so I'm gonna take that, and I'm going to apply just into the inner area of my eye. I'm also going to take that and put it underneath my eye and drag it outwards just like that. I really hope this is picking up as good on camera because it's just like oh, in person. I love it. I'm going to leave it like that for now. It is so not picking up as it is in person but it's always with glitter, hey? Um, I'm going to curl my eyelashes and check on some mascara. For mascara, I used a combination of the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara and Benefits They're Real. Find that Better Than Sex is a little bit clumpy unless you have a brush like this one that can like kind of sort it out. But yeah, so that is what I used for that. And for lashes, I actually used a brand new pair of socialized lashes. And I'm really excited because we will be getting these made in the next few months. Um, I don't have a name for them, but they do look like this. They are really similar to our ravishing lashes. They're double tiered, but they flare out at the sides. They're another three quarter lash. I know you guys are going to love them and that is what I was wearing. So I'm going to reapply them. This is probably my third time wearing these. So if they look a little bit raggedy, that's why. But I have to give lashes a test drive before I work with them. And it's so funny because like, you design them and you work with them on the computer and then you get sent the sample and then 90% of the time the sample is just atrocious and you probably send it back and forth at least two or three times before you get something where you're like, yes, okay, this is exactly what I was going for, let's do this. So yeah, that's where I'm at with this. All right, so I'm gonna add a coat of glue to the band. You only need a little bit. Let it dry for five or 10 seconds and then pop it on my eye. At this point, you can also push the lashes up so that they sit up a little bit or just adjust them however you like to wear them. I'm gonna move on to putting on some primer so I can let that sink in while I'm doing my brows. For primer today, I'm gonna to use the Maybelline Master Prime by Face Studio Blur and Smooth Primer. Um, this is my second time using it and I really liked it the first time, so sweet, let's use it. Kind of comparable to a thicker version of the Hourglass Primer. For eyebrows, I'm going to use the Essence Pencil in Blonde. I do need to sharpen it, however. That's definitely a huge eyebrow tip for you if you're not liking the way your brows are turning out and you're using a pencil, sharpen your pencil. It really does help. I'm going to top that off with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel. The stuff keeps them in place. Yes. All right. Um, for foundation, I have been using a mix of the Maybelline Fit Me Foundation and the Makeup Forever HD Foundation. I feel like the Fit Me is awesome, I really, really love it, but I really like the way it looks when it's mixed with the HD, so I've been doing a little bit of one and a little bit of the other. Um, when I don't have a tan on my face, I really have been enjoying my, if I can find it, here it is, my Real Techniques um, buffing brush. This thing is awesome, if you don't already own it, Think about buying it because it's totally worth it. Um, I just really like the way that it applies. Anyway, I have been kind of smoothing it in and then bouncing it into my skin. So spreading it by doing that and then bouncing it and pushing it into my skin. And then I find around my nose area, I need a little bit of extra coverage and I also need to use my beauty blender. I don't know why, but it just makes that much of a difference in how it looks, so that's just what I do. Um, I have a little bit of redness on the end of my nose from my facial last week. We were doing a lot of extractions, let's get real. Um, so I will probably put another little layer of powder on top of my nose just to get rid of that redness. I'm gonna put on some baby lips. And leave it at that for just a minute and then ah, throwing things. <laughs> for my under eyes, I'm gonna take the Bobbi Brown Concealer 
corrector, not concealer, corrector in peach. I adore this stuff. It's one of my favorite products of all times. Um, since I got nails on, I find it extremely difficult to apply anything with my fingers. So I'm going to take a little tiny synthetic brush, pick up some product, and just place it underneath my eyes in the darkest spots. And now I am going to pat that in with my finger. Taking the Tarte Creaseless Concealer in light, and I have to apply this with a beauty blender or else it just does not work on me. But I need the tiniest little bit because it is super pigmented and you just honestly do not need a lot of this product. Take your beauty blender and actually I'm going to spray it with a little bit of Fix Plus. I find that that just really shears it out and makes it an awesome product for me. And drag it up my cheekbones, kind of in that whole triangular shape deal. Before anything moves, I'm using my Shade and Light palette from Kat Von D and finding a brush. This is a little miniature taper highlighter brush and I'm picking up the peachy color in the yellowy color and just setting my under eyes with that. Gobi powder, another one of my absolute go-to favorite, favorite products. I like to use this on a dual fiber brush. The only one that I have clean is this little MAC one. So I'm going to pick up some of that powder, tap off the rest in the lid and just apply it where you'd apply, apply, apply a bronzer. <laughs> this brush is probably the absolute oldest in my entire collection of BT dubs. It is like so gangly and gross. <laughs> Oops, the day is this. For blush, I use my current favorite Hourglass Dim Infusion. This is another one of those products that just go buy it. Like I waited way too long to buy this. Go buy it. Looks like this. Um, I like to build this product up. It is just such a beautiful pinky color. Next up, I'm using a Becca product. This is the Opal Highlight. This shit, guys. It's like, go to. Like, I fully stopped using Max Mineralized Skin Finish and Soft and Gentle for this stuff. I'm cheating on you, Mac. Just taking a little tapered brush and applying it to the tops of my cheekbones. I'm also gonna use this underneath my eyebrows. Going back in with that glitter and just adding another little tiny bit in the tear duct area just to go over top of anything that I missed. That train's freaking loud. I've been using the Urban Decay Makeup Setting Spray for the sole reason that the nozzle on it works, whereas my Scandinavia one, the nozzle is completely screwed up. And then last but not least for lipstick, I'm using Velvet Teddy. And I have just recently discovered my love for this. I was late to the game, sorry guys. And this was the final look for my Benefit Meetup. I really love the way that the sparkles just make it such like a girly, pretty look. And I haven't done anything with pink for a while, so that was kind of fun. And it also matches my dress. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know down below what your comments were, what your feedback is. I'd love to know whether or not you have tried the Makeup Store Glitter and if you have the same opinion of it as me. If you have any video requests, leave them down below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you again for watching. Bye!